Hey, what's up, everybody? Marcos Vegas on location here in Hollywood, being jo joined with George Cambosis Jr., who makes his return July 22nd in Oklahoma here in the United States. George, back in L.A., I, I saw a post you, you wrote back where it all started. Uh, remember seeing you training out here with Manny, running the hills. How's it like uh, to be back after those two fights back-to-back uh, -back with Devin? Yeah, look, it's fantastic to be back. You know, this is where... I made my mark. This is where I, I was able to build myself and you know, come to the hard-ass gyms, come to the places where you get the veterans, you've got the contenders, the former world champions, the world champions. You're alongside fighters, real fighters. So I wanted to feel that again. You know, I'm extremely hungry. I've made the sacrifice and I'm here where, where it all started and where I was able to make my emphatic rise, become champion of the world. And we, uh, we plan on doing it again. We're going to take uh, this IBF World Title Eliminator and pick up the IBF World Title as well. So I'm excited, July 22. Man, you had a, like a hell of a, like a 12, 13 months, man. You, you went from becoming an uh, undisputed champ. A lot of people would say, like, oh, no, no, it's whatever the fans would say about that. Yeah, you know, I know you consider that because I, I spoke to you about that, to fighting Devin back to back to, to now. How would you encapsulate the, the last 13, 14 months and what you experienced? Uh, it was 11 months to be precise, man. 11 months I fought three huge fights. TFM Lopez and Devin Haney twice. Uh, two guys are inside the top 10 right now, pound for pound. So uh, it was a crazy 11 months. A lot of, uh, lot of hard work and a lot of sacrifice. A lot of uh, you know, dedication to not only my craft in the ring, but also to the media, to promoting. You know, we've got to remember I did a massive stadium fight in Australia, so I had to do a lot of promoting as, as you know, the A-side at that stage. So uh, it all comes to the territory. You know, I've learned a lot from them fights. I've learned a lot of, of experience. So um, it's good reflecting back on it, but I'm hungry for more. I won the belts. I defended them against, uh, I tried to defend them against a, a, an unbelievable fighter. Unfortunately, I lost them. I went back again. A lot of guys would said, no, I'm not going back to it, but I went back to try to reclaim my belts. Unfortunately, it didn't happen, but we're here again. We're here to make, uh, you know, get back to the top and win another championship and, and get that glory again. Yeah, man, I would imagine, uh, I remember you took a little break uh, off from like media and, and all that stuff, but like when you look back at those 11 months, what's the biggest takeaway you feel from like everything you went through from the highest of highs to the lowest flows? Uh, look, this, this sport is, you know, you can be at the top of the world and all of a sudden, you know, you choose to fight, you know, another very good fighter, a guy who was very, uh, no one to fight. And then all of a sudden it doesn't come right and, and you know, the fans will kind of think, oh, no, nah, he's, he's done or whatever. You know, don't judge me on my losses, judge me on my return. And that's where we're here now. We're here for the return, July 22. Um, I learned a lot from them fights, from the wins and the losses. You know, when you go in 36 rounds with the elite, you pick up a lot of things and you can see today how much better we are for them, from them fights. So um, I'm excited for July 22. It's going to be a, a great statement live on ESPN, live on pay-per-view in Australia. And, uh, you know, we're here making the sacrifice not just to win this fight. We're going to win this fight, but we want to make a statement on this fight. Max Hughes is going to be a statement. You know, you, you kind of mentioned it, and it's always been a saying, like, you're only as good as your last fight, which uh, I feel it's, you know, not fair because there's certain styles that some guys don't look against, and then there's other styles that people do look against. G given the two fights and given what I said, like, what do you make of, like, the reaction from maybe the fans here or fans in Australia that, that kind of may have overlooked you or, or not putting much thought into you anymore? Yeah, look, styles my fights. I've been saying it for so long. Certain styles will draw better with, with, with other certain styles. And when we came up against TFM Lopez, that style, both guys very similar, explosive, throw a lot of punches, you know, want to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Then you've got Devin, who's a very sharp boxer, guy who uses his reach and distance and, and his, his length and, uh, you know, his size. So, unfortunately, things don't go right in that fight. But again, the fans, you know, got to respect the biggest fights. The fans want the biggest fights. That's what they're always parading about. You give them the best fight, then you should give respect to the fighter. Now... After the first Haney fight, obviously there was a bit more disrespect. But after the second fight, when I went toe-to-toe, -to -toe, I gave everything I had. Blood, sweat and tears in that fight. And I got a lot of respect. And we saw it in Vegas when I came out for the Haney-Lomachenko fight. It was crazy. The fans were, were, were everywhere. I took thousands of photos. And um, that's the respect that everyone was excited. And they could see the kind of fighter I am. So, you know, we're back. You know, we uh, caught up with you uh, after the uh, Haney-Lomachenko fight, but just looking at the way Lomachenko fought, did you pick anything up there that you could have maybe thought to yourself, like, damn, why, why didn't I do that? Like I said, Styles make fights. Lomachenko's got that tight guard. He's a little bit smaller. You know, he likes to really close the distance. He's a southpaw, so that's why we came with a game plan in the second fight to be southpaw. I knew that there was more openings uh, with Devin as a southpaw. And 
I know firsthand after the fight with Devon saying you, you, you really threw us off guard, especially in the first couple of rounds with the southpaw. So um, styles make fights. Loma fought a, a hell of a fight. So did Haney. They fought a great fight. Close fight. And, um, you know, they both move on. Who knows what, what's the comfort for both of them. Yeah, I know Lomachenko was a guy that we talked about. Yeah. That you want to fight him for a, a long time. You know, when you fight for, well, you were at the top at 135, and, and when you fought Devin, what made you decide to stay at 135 and not maybe take a chance to move up to 140 where we're seeing all these other guys move up now from 135? I, I make the weight comfortable. I'm 30 years of age. I feel great. I've got a, a dietitian now, and I train extremely hard, and the weight's never been an issue for me. I make the weight well. I've been able to get a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger since the Haney fights. And um, with a dietitian, it's come down not nice and comfortable. So at this stage, I want to be world champion again at 135. And then from there, we will assess and see what, what moves are up at 140 and we make that move. But um, that's where I camp campaign at, 135. How do you see the picture now? Because we're hearing that Devin's going to move up to 140. The belts are going to scatter. This is an eliminator. Like, who else do you guys uh, see in the picture, you and your team, at 135 potentially fighting for the titles? Well, the most important thing is, is Maxi Hughes. That's all I'm focused on. Maxi Hughes, July 22. But again, there are so many great fights out there. I really like the Javante Davis fight. I think styles was. A lot of people saying he's too explosive. He'll knock me out, whatever. They said the same thing with Teofimo Lopez. I think styles-wise, me and him is, is a shootout, like I would say against me and Lopez back in the day. Um, Shakur, see you, champ. See um, Shakur Stevenson is another fantastic fight. You know, he's very avoided. He's, he's a very good southpaw, but I love fighting the southpaws. And um, you know, you got, you got great fighters. It's Lomachenko. Lomachenko makes a lot of sense. You know, he lost to, to Teofimo. I beat Teofimo. We were meant to fight. There was talk about me and him fighting back in 2017, 2018. Then obviously we had a pretty much signed agreement to fight. So third time lucky. Me and him in Australia, you do 60,000 all. Who knows? We can go to Greece. You got a lot of uh, Ukrainians there at the moment because of the war. Um, you know, a lot of lot of respect to them. Who knows? We can fight in Greece in the old Olympic Stadium. Who knows what's to come? Damn, that'd be nuts. And I completely forgot that you and that was supposed to be the undisputed fight. Yeah. You and, and Vasily, uh, because of the war, that didn't happen. So yeah, that that would be kind of a crazy thing but it's even a crazier thing that despite the losses you calling out and wanting guys that people don't want to fight people don't want to fight tank because he's too hard of a puncher people don't want to fight Shakur because they think like this guy's too good but you're like no nah, I, I want these guys you go back a few years ago before we spoke against uh, before the Lopez fight I don't know if you can remember what I said but I said I want to feel his power I want to taste his power yeah. I said that it's the same thing with with tank Hey, if you put me to sleep, put me to sleep. I'm a warrior. I'm prepared to do whatever in that ring. So I want to feel that. I see, I see things in, in that fight, like I saw in the Lopez fight. And um, style was that's a great fight. But we'll see. Maxi Hughes, 1st July 22. Then I've got a great team behind me, top rank, the Bell Entertainment, Ferocious Promotions. You know, great manager, great coaches. And, um, you know, whatever's to come will be after July 22. That's our focus now. Uh, I spoke to Teo a few weeks back and I asked him, hey, if there's one fight you got to get back, which was the, the fight? And he said, you. He, he wants that fight with you. I saw it. I saw it. He didn't sound too confident, did he? He was like, uh, Cambosis fight? I don't know. He just doesn't sound confident, man. And that's one thing with TFM Lopez. That confidence, when it comes to me and him, I just know how to, to handle that with, with, with me and him. So we'll see if it makes sense and it's there and he's not retired and he hasn't vacated the belt and, you know, it's, 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 it's there on the table. Mate, I'm all for it. Like I said, I'm fight the best of the best. I already fought him. So let's do it again. Who cares? Yeah, I was going to ask, do you believe he's retired or is it just kind of like a posturing thing? Look, like I said, he's got a lot of things outside of the sport. My heart goes to him where, where it comes to things that he's going through. Um... I even said it after I beat him, go and enjoy time with your kid, you know, and, and I know that's a difficult situation, so, you know, we'll see what happens. But I'm sure he'll be back. You know, when, when he's talking about money, when the money, when the money dries up, you got to fight. You are, or in other cases, you don't need to fight, but you want to fight in, 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 in this position like I am. I don't need to fight. I want to fight. I love fighting. I'm a warrior. In his case, I don't know, he seems like he's a bit forcey. You know, it's, it's like outside people tell me, oh, you got to fight, man. And in this situation, you might have to fight. You uh, sent a tweet out to Max, uh, and I saw it, where you're like, hey, like, um, I, I forget exactly. Kellerman. Yeah, Max Kellerman, yeah. So tell me a little little perception on that. Before the fight with me and Lopez, you yeah. saw him screaming his lungs out, literally an hour and a half before the fight. Yeah. I'm going to eat you, I'm going to eat you. We forgot that, I got the footage. <laughs> after I, I, I beat him, after 12 rounds, he goes and does a backflip. Come on, you tell me you got some issue. 
from what some random doctor, we've never seen the evidence, put it out there. You know, what the right hand that I landed that nearly decapitated your head didn't do any damage, or the other right hands I landed throughout the 12 rounds didn't do any damage. You gotta take your, your wins with your wins and your losses with your losses. Devin Haney beat me twice, I'm a man, he beat me, so be it, I'm back. You know, give me my respect. And a lot of fans, give me my respect. I beat him on that night, and uh, Styles make fights, I, I have his number. And if you wanna do it again, we can talk. I'd love to see it again, man, just because of this, because there's a lot of- I get, I get more, more size on me, yeah. I get to get a little bit bigger, a little bit more explosive, punch a little bit harder, and uh, we can talk. But for now, July 22, Maxi Hughes. So the Max Kellerman can say what he's want, what he wants. We had a we had a, a great interview uh, after the Lopez fight. I was very respectful to him. Uh, he was very respectful to, to me. He's he's a you know a big journalist in the game of boxing, in the world of boxing. But when you're criticising the New York State Athletic Commission, who is the most thorough and strictly commissioned in the world, the amount of testing we have to go through just to step inside them ropes, that's that on your behalf as a journalist, you know, it's a little bit, uh, you know, subpar. In your opinion, George, because you were kind of put in the same position too in terms of the whole undisputed, he also said that uh, Teo should be considered double undisputed. Well, what do you think about that? Well, no, I didn't, didn't really say it like that. I said, no, 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 Max said that. Yeah, Max, yeah, look, at the end of the day, you can come up with what you want, yeah. you know. You can say what you want, I can say what I want. TFM can say that, you know, he was undisputed the first time, which you can make a good case because I beat him, so I'm, of course I'm going to make that case. Um, Devon beat me, so he became full undisputed. Now, in the second fight with, with uh, Josh Taylor, it wasn't official undisputed. Yes, you beat a guy who was a former undisputed, who had to vacate his belts because of the mandatories, but you didn't beat the proper uh, undisputed. And again, it was quite cringy bringing all the belts. You know what I mean? Like, them belts are gone. I got them, now Devon got them. Yes, we got them at home, sitting in our cabinets, but imagine me rocking up to the Max Use fights with all my belts, look at me. It's a bit cringy, man. Just to show you, look at me. There are any belts, man, relax. You know, you know finally, just uh, going back, I want to see that tank fight. And people have said like, man, how, how can you beat a guy like that? You mentioned you see things there. Give us a little hint, what, what, what do you see there? On that tank is a very explosive fighter, and, and it's no disrespect. A lot of respect there, what he done with, with Ryan Garcia and his other guys have, has, has been extraordinary. He is a puncher, but I can take a shot. I've got a chin on me. I'm very explosive as well. I throw a lot of punches in, in bunches, and when I take someone's confidence away from them, when they can't take me out, and start keep coming and keep, keep breaking them down, you know, opens up a lot of holes. So it's a great fight. He's a lot smaller than what I am. I feel like I can capitalize on that. He'll probably be the first guy that's been smaller than me, but I'm actually used, I think he's a little bit smaller than me as well, so um, it'll be an interesting fight if, if, if it makes uh, sense and, and it happens. But again, people say, oh, it's for the money, for the payday, whatever, fuck the payday. I've made enough money in this sport. It's about the name, it's about the legacy, that's what, what I'm here for. I'm 30 years of age, I, I, I feel better than ever, I'm in my prime right now, and it's about the names on, on my record and, and fighting the best of the best. Nothing else. George, uh, I'm, I'm getting wrapped up for time, but it's always great chatting with you. Love the energy as always. Love the attitude of wanting to take on the challenges. I think that's what we should see from not only our, our champions, which you were a champion and you always will be a champion, uh, but also the other fighters as well. So always, George, great chatting with you. Thank you for all the support and uh, you know, get ready, July 22. Man, uh, can you break down this Errol Spence versus Terrence Crawford fight? What are the keys for both fighters to get victory? It's a, a hell of a fight, man. It's a 50-50 fight. I'm always continually going back and forth with myself. Thinking, Spence does that well, he can get the edge on Crawford. Then, no, Crawford does that well, he can get the, the edge on Spence. You know, both guys are, are tremendous fighters, and that's why it's such an intriguing fight. I really can't pick one. I really can't pick who's going to win this fight, and that's what's going to drive the fans towards this kind of fight. Spence is such a good body, body puncher. He's big, he's strong, he holds that defense nice and tight. But he did get caught by Ugas in, in, in uh, a right. couple of his fights ago. You know, he got caught, it looked like he got hurt. But then again, Crawford, such a good switch hitter, you know, can, can, can hurt you from any position. But again, you've seen in his career as well, he's been uh, hurt. And he did get dropped by that uh, Cal Vasquez or whatever his name was. And Gambo, he was hurt too. Gambo hurt too. But you know what? Things have changed, obviously, back then. Um, what's the age? Crawford's a little bit older. Yeah, I think he's like 35, 36. Six, yeah, that could come into play, but again, Crawford is, is an absolute beast, man. And so is Spence. Uh, I, I really can't give a prediction. I think it's going to be a great battle. I think it's going to go down to the wire. I don't think anyone's going to knock each other out. 
Uh, I think it's going to be a real tit for tat kind of fight. And, you know, big respect to both guys. I, I, I think both guys are tremendous fighters. And, you know, I'm excited to watch it. July 22 myself and July uh, 29. Yeah. Uh, a week before. Yes, I know. So I've got to, you know, I'm... Make it over there to Vegas. I'm, I'm, look, I'm a big name, but I'm the, entre the, entree. I'm the entree compared to that. Look, <laughs> I, I say it the way it is. I'm, I'm real and I'm the entree compared to that kind of fight. But um, I'll be back to that level again. I've been at that level not so long ago. So uh, bring on uh, Crawford and Spence. Spence Crawford, whatever way you want to say it. I'm excited. How does one separate themselves in that fight? I think when it comes to such a, a, a high-level fight, you know, it's that, that war of attrition. You know, that who wants it that much more? Who's going to put in the extra, not 1%, but 0.1% in the gym, go that extra mile? Um, that's where it's, it's really going to make a difference, I believe. And yeah, I don't know, I feel like Crawford, just that, that work ethic, Maybe a little bit better than what Spence does, but then again, Spence is just a good fighter too. So I really can't say nothing bad about both guys. You know, like I said, I respect both guys, and I think it's it's great for the sport. And we need more better fights like this. Best fight, the best, and you know, we're gonna see the sport continue to rise, and that's what we want. There's part of me that sees like Crawford be able to counter punch and counter real well. There's another part that sees me. Just him being drowned out by activity of Spence. Spence walking him down and just bop, 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 bop. That's the way I see it. You know, like uh, Crawford is a very dangerous counter puncher. Yeah, he can land that, that shot from different angles and, and switch and land. But then Spence has got that high work rate. He's got that size. I think he's a, a, a little bit bigger. Um, that high guard and the body work, the level change could make a, a big you know, difference. Just going to have to wait and see. If I were to give you $1,000 cash right now, who would you put your money on? Um... Uh, <laughs> A, a draw, a draw. Really? I'll put it as a draw and I'll do it again. Yeah, put, yeah. It, put it as a draw. I wonder what the odds are on a draw. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm, if, if I'm betting the thousand, yeah. um, I'll double your thousand. I'll put my thousand as well and uh, I'll go a draw. All right. yeah. George, one last thing. Uh, Canelo versus Charlo, we think, is going to get announced officially, though. They're saying that's the fight. Yeah. Break that fight down for us. You know, look, I think Charlo, Charlo is a great fighter, um, but... The inactivity is, is too much. You know, I think in, inactivity is, is, is sometimes good for a fighter. And obviously, I've had a little bit more time since my last fight in, in October. Um, but for his stance, where, where he's at, that two years is going to be a big factor. Canelo has been, been fighting. But again, Canelo didn't look amazing against Ryder. But again, Ryder's a tough guy too. So um, I think Canelo gets the job done. But again, exciting fight, man. It'll be interesting. But I think Canelo yeah, gets it done. And then... Hopefully he goes to, to the big one, Benavides. That's the one that we all want to see. Um, I don't know if Benavides and, and I think Muriel is going to fight. Um, that would be another great fight. So we'll see. What are you liking that one? I think um, Benavides, man. Yeah. He's been in the bigger fights, more experienced. You know, he can take a shot, keep coming back. Um, got a, got ex explosive power. And he's got a high volume too. So I th I'd have to go with him, yeah. Um, because we're talking about Charlo, do you think Tim, based on his fight with uh, Ocampo and him being active, has a, a great chance, of more than a 50-50 chance of beating Jermel? No, I, I don't think it's, it's uh, his percentage goes up. Look, let's be serious. Ocampo is was, was, a fighter, but he's not, yeah, look, it's not a, 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 an amazing name. But again, it was a smart, take, get another fight, keep that activity up. Obviously, they did Harrison first, they went into Ocampo. Keep moving towards, you know, this big fight. And I think Charlo has no choice but to, to fight him. He has to fight him. He can't walk away from this fight. If he does walk away or vacate the WBA belt, it's not a good look on him. And, um, you know, they, 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 they got to get it done. And let's see what happens in that fight. It's, it's, a, good, it's a good fight. Obviously, uh, Tim, before the last two fights, you would have given Charlo a, a massive edge. But the activity and obviously the inactivity of Charlo has brought it a lot closer. You know, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And, me and Tim used to train together a long time, so you know it's 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 great to see someone like myself that did it, got all the belts, and now I'm coming back for my return. But he's in that situation too, so this is where it's your make or break kind of fight. Are you at that level to get all the belts, um, or it wasn't his time? So we'll see. Yeah, you kind of like laid the the first wave, like the groundwork for all these guys coming up from Australia now. We are still the big big name in Australian boxing, the face of Australian boxing. We've done the, the hard yards. And we're back here, you know, continue putting the hard yards. But we did lay a, a big, you know, blueprint and, and, and a confidence where Cambosis went and did it. I can do it too. I can go and achieve it as well. Now, look, it was a little bit different. I'd done it a different way. You know, didn't have the big, big support from Australia. Didn't have the backing from Australia. 
um, like a guy like, like Tim does. But I'm proud the way I did it and got to the top my way. And I uh, continue to do it my way now with the big backing of Top Rank the Bella and my company, Fresh Promotions. Yeah, and you showed that you can bring people over there and you can pack stadiums because I hear there's a little back and forth now that Tim wants Charlie to go over there because of the potential of a stadium fight. Yeah, it can always be done. You know, the Aussie fans uh, come out and support. Now, I was very, uh, you know, in a great situation where not only the Australian fans, but I got a massive Greek fan base, as you saw in Melbourne. The Greeks are fanatics. They support me. They get behind me. Now, I don't know if Tim has that with the Russians uh, at this stage, but I was very uh, fortunate to have that with me and be able to fill in that stadium, pack that stadium, and we've seen it. From a guy that they didn't really promote, a guy that they didn't really they put on the back burner all the time that was doing his thing here until he got the belts, came out and, and, and did what he had to do. So 40, 45,000 in the stadium. Crazy. Not, not everyone can do that, you know. You like triggered a memory, like memory unlocked. And, and look, Devin, you know, full respect to him, but in that first fight, he wasn't really the big, big name in Australia. I could afford anyone that would have come out to, to the stadium fight. Uh, and then in the second, obviously, when he beat me, his name really grew, and he's got—I know—he's got a lot of respect uh, in Australia. And you know, like I've told him, he's got to come out to Australia and offer a fight. We've done and dusted that. <laughs> come out for a holiday. We'll, uh, we'll have some fun out there. Beautiful memories, though. Because now, now thinking about that first stadium fight, I, yeah, it's, you don't see that very often in boxing. It is. You know, when, whenever you do a stadium fight, a, a mega fight like that, all the belts, the, 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 the atmosphere, you know, it, it's amazing. I get goosebumps just thinking about it. Just when I walked out, you know, to, to 50 Cent on a freezing cold June 5th, uh, winter's day on a Sunday. And it was amazing. It was amazing. And, and the atmosphere was amazing. And, you know, it's, that's, that's a memory that, that I have in the past. But it's something that I want to emulate again in the future. And I think with guys like Lomachenko, guys like Javante Davis, I don't know if he would ever be able to... I don't think he can get into Australia, so that probably won't happen. But um, Lom, yeah, Lom, Lomachenko... I saw how strict they were with Bill. I don't know where he is right now, but yeah, I don't think he ain't getting in. Um, Lomachenko and a rematch with Lopez, I think are the other fights that can be done in stadiums in Australia. And I think they do even bigger numbers than what we've done in the first fight with me and Haney.